Next, I'd like to call to order the Muskegon County Board of Commissioners Transportation Committee agenda, uh, March 11, 2021. If, um, and uh, would call this to order this meeting and I would need a roll call vote. Commissioner roll, Sear. Excuse me, a roll call. Um, I am here to Lake Michigan. <laughs> Commissioner Javi Wright. Here. Oh, Commissioner Hughes. Here, Muskegon Township. Commissioner Laring. Here, Muskegon County uh, or, or boardroom, thank you. Commissioner Nash. Here, City of Muskegon. Chairman Skolnick. Uh, here, City of Norton Shores. <laughs> Commissioner Pago. Here, Muskegon County Hall Justice Boardroom. Commissioner Wilkins. Here, Muskegon County Hall Justice. And Commissioner Brown. Here, City of Muskegon. Uh, item number thank three you. on the, thank you. Uh, number three, uh, agenda, uh, approve of the, approval of the minutes of the special committee meeting of February 23rd, 2021. Would need a motion and support. So moved, I'll be right. Support. And we have a motion and support. We would need a roll call vote to approve the minutes of February 23rd, 2021. I'll be right. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Commissioner Laring. Here. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pego. Yes. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Next on the agenda this afternoon uh, is informational items. Uh, we have a couple here. Uh, a, a trans transit operations report. And um, these should be in your packet. Motion to place them on file. And so we have a mo we have a motion to, uh, to put these on file for record. So thank you very much. And do we have a second? Support school report. Thank you. And we would know to roll, do we, we roll call for that, Kathy? Wait, yes. I'd just like to ask um, Mr. Lukens, um, are there any concerns in these reports? I mean, obviously they're affected by COVID, but um, is it going the direction we want it to for both yes. of us? Airport. You know, of, of course, we'd like to see. Uh, oh, Bob Lukens, Community Development Director. Sorry about that. Um, yes, you. of course, we'd like to see them um, move in an upward trend, and and I believe they are. And as the weather, you know, warms and uh, more folks are vaccinated, um, and uh, you know, the COVID um, winds down. I guess you could say we should be seeing more um, people flying and uh, using public transport. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, Mr. Lukens. Um, next on the agenda is uh, item number five is the uh, public comment on any, at, on, any, on any agenda item at this point. Do we have any public comment that would like to uh, the board to address? Mr. Chair, I do see no hands raised. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, next, we have a couple items here, several items for items for consideration. Uh, TR 21 slash 03 dash 09. Um, Mr. Lukens from the airport to grant an ease ass assessment uh, to DTE gas company to install the above gr ground gate valve and associated infrastructure on the property owned by the Muskegon County Airport. The easement request has been reviewed and approved by the FAA. Is there any questions, comments, or concerns on, so on moved. The, this item? We have a so move. Moved. move. Um, I guess we could go through each. No, no, no. Each, no don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, I would need a, uh, we have a motion and support, and we would need a roll call, a vote uh, on this, please. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. 
Commissioner Pego. Yes. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. I didn't hear you, Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Next item for consideration is TR21 slash uh, 03 dash 10 uh, to approve acceptance of a grant offer from the FAA in the amount of 1,006,702 and authorize the board share to assign and authorize the county clerk to execute any necessary resolutions for the grant offer. I would so need a motion and support. support. We have a motion and support. Thank you. And a vote on that one, please. Uh, Kathy? Can I have a question, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Questions, comments, or concerns? Thank you, um, Commissioner Sear. Mr. Lucan, what exactly, I guess I'm missing that. What exactly is this? Uh, this is a, they call it a CRISA grant um, from the FAA. Uh, and it is for um, maintaining airport services um, during the COVID pandemic. Uh, as you know, air travel has been adversely affected by this um, pandemic. And this is funding that's coming from the federal government to provide um, COVID protection at airports and allow people to fly and to continue um, operations of the airport during this time. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Mr. Chair, I have a question if I may. Yes, uh, Commissioner Loring, please. Like a definition of what that means uh, in, in actual usage, this this uh, very vaguely, and how do you intend to open securities to these uh, potential passengers? I mean, this is a million dollars, and uh, we don't particularly have a budget for how it's going to be spent. I'm not comfortable with um, this grant simply because it's so vague and how you're going to use it. I mean. Uh, we had a budget, and this is going to be a surplus of money that's coming into the airport. I'd like some particulars on how you intend to use it. Yes, this grant um, will be used for maintaining operations at the airport, so it'll be used for salaries and other, uh, uh, you know, other needed uh, uh, materials at the airport. But mainly, it will be for salaries and other types of operations that are um, required at the airport to keep it running. So you, we already have the salaries covered in the budget. So what are we going to be doing with the excess money? Well, because of the loss of revenues, Commissioner, uh, this helps supplement that, the loss of revenues. And uh, the funding has been provided to airports across the nation um, in response to uh, the COVID pandemic and those loss of revenues. Mr. Lukens, Mr. Lukens, I have a question. Usually my experience has been with grants that they have to be very specific as to what they're going to be used for. Is there a, uh, to, um, to have us understand a little bit better what this grant is for, is, is that something we have availability to look at also? Uh, you know, as Commissioner Larink said, that the requirements are rather um, vague. Um, but the funding is to be used for, you know, COVID protections at airports and to keep the airports uh, uh, operating. Um, okay. The FAA approves the grant expenditures, and these are typically reimbursement grants. So the county would submit invoices and other records of spending, and we would be reimbursed for that spending. Mr. Roo, can I ask a question? Yeah, yes, I'm sorry, Commissioner Hughes. No, it wasn't me. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Pago. I am so sorry. Yeah, I had an additional. Will this require additional training because uh, because of the COVID? You know, maybe we will find that we have to clean more. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, it will not at this time, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner. Okay, now may I? Yes, please. You said that um, we had a loss of revenue. Do we know, do you have a number of what that loss of revenue was? I don't uh, 
uh, I, I do not have that number at this time, but it's been substantial. Can you have that at full board, please? Sure. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, I, I have a follow-up question, if I may. Yes. Um, so, uh, Mr. Lukens, my question and concerns are, we've transferred the management over to a private firm. Uh, these losses or revenue surpluses, uh, these are not county costs anymore other than for the building maintenance. I don't understand where these revenues for loss of salary would go when it's under private management now. Well, it is under private management, but we have a contract with F3 um, to provide those services. And this will go towards, uh, you know, some of the costs of that contract, that annual contract fee and management fee. All right, so I just a, my follow up to, to that is the devil is always in the details. And there's a very significant lack of details here. And I have great concern over accepting this money with such a vague request. Uh, everybody likes free money, but I do have a, a big concern with this particularly uh, because the management firm is under contract and they are already budgeted. So if somebody throws a million dollars in your lap, there's bound to be strings attached and I've got great concern. Yes, and I can, uh, again, the, the details are somewhat vague on these types of uh, grants during uh, or for COVID relief. So I will uh, attempt to get additional information on what exactly the grant funds can be used for. But again, it was um, outlined in the grant that it was for COVID um, assistance in keeping you know, airports um, operating during these times. So uh, by the board meeting, we will have additional information for the commissioners on this grant and some of the requirements for it. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Brown, if, if I could yes. just make a comment. Please. Um, personally, uh, I think it would be foolish not to accept this grant. I, I'm not sure where the logic is in that. I don't know if the commissioners are, are aware of the catastrophic leak we had in the main terminal. There was significant damage there. There was significant damage in the Coast Guard terminal. Um, I saw pictures of it. I didn't see it. I saw a bill, a significant bill from, uh, I can't remember the name of the company, but it was one of the ones that does clean up after there's been some kind of a disaster. But um, I'm not sure where that's going. Mark, maybe you could say something about that. Yes, thank you. Um, the way the, the roof leaked at the time, the drainage pipes were frozen, therefore the roof filled up with water and it started coming through the ceiling. So clean up there. If you also recall, we're in the middle of looking at doing an engineering design. We were going to bring that forward today, uh, but we're not quite ready reviewing the engineering proposal. So we'll be asking that bring forward as well once that design is done. Uh, we'll be asking to replace that roof, which uh, either these dollars or the other dollars that we received last year could help do that as well. One other point to this million, it can be used over the next three years. So really you could almost say 330,000 every year, which will help loss, like Mr. Lukens was saying, which we can apply that to our F3 contract. Um, if, I could, if I could add something, Commissioner Skolnick, uh, the Coast Guard hangar that you were referring to, that yeah. was a um, fire suppression um, pipe burst. Uh, the fire suppression system froze and burst and uh, it caused significant damage in the Coast Guard hangar, um, specifically in the office and, and um, living area of the hangar. So uh, we have, I've been working with risk management and Karen Mendham, as has Rita, uh, Beerman at the airport and uh, the other airport staff on assessing that damage, getting estimates to replace um, the mainly uh, IT type materials or, or, or um, equipment in the Coast Guard hangar. Uh, so, you know, that was a pretty significant, sub significant uh, 
problem that we had at the Coast Guard hangar, but it's been taken care of now. And, um, you know, we're in the process of filing that insurance claim for that. Um, if, if I could, Mr. Brown, if I could just ask Mr. Yes, Ruby. Commissioner um, Skolnick. Uh, Bob, wasn't there, was there damage to some of their radio equipment? There was, yes, sir. Okay, so, and the roof on the main terminal is quite old. I know we've been talking about replacing that for some time. Is that, yes, sir. that's correct too, and that's going to be significant? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Yes, Commissioner, uh, sir. But, but, okay, so we want to replace the roof. That's great. We need to do that, it sounds like, but we really don't know if these funds can even be applied towards that. Is that correct? That would um, be my, yeah, yeah, Mr. Lukens, yeah. Yeah, these funds can be used for a variety of different, um, you know, um, in a variety of different circumstances. So, uh, you know, in discussions with the FAA, there is the potential that, that these funds, these CRISA funds could be used for the roof or a portion of the roof project. Okay, thank you. Do you have a follow-up question, if I may? Yes, Commissioner Long. So back to this idea of the water damage uh, at the uh, Coast Guard property, <laughs> Um, I'm assuming the county is owning that building and we lease it to the Coast Guard, if I understand. Yes. Okay. So we have insurance on the building and insurance covered the cost of those, correct, of those repairs. Yes, we're working through that now, sir. But we're self-insured. So I'm, I'm speaking, thank you. So uh, in regards to that particular issue, we have insurance on the main terminal, correct? We do, yes. Okay, and this is COVID money, and neither one of those incidents were caused by COVID, correct? Yes. Yes, they were, or no, they were not? No, they were not. Thank you. So I don't understand uh, a COVID grant uh, suggesting that it's going to be used to repair uh, bad ceiling tile or Coast Guard equipment out in a building it's already been covered by insurance. I just, uh, the devil is in the details and there are no details in this uh, request. And uh, I think we need to have a lot more information before we accept a million dollars that we know is gonna have a lot of strings attached to it. Mr. Chair, can I chime in for a second? Uh, yes, Coleman. yes, uh, Michael. So there's a lot of published information regarding the uh, grants, including um, FAQs that um, that the government has put out on the uh, airport coronavirus response grant program. Um, I will agree um, with Mr. Lukens that uh, the use of those funds is is very broad, um, but I I certainly can provide the link or provide it to Mr. Lukens so that he can distribute that to uh, commissioners. Um, there seem to be uh, little uh, strings attached, if you will. I haven't seen um, the uh, grant agreements yet um, to know what additional information might be included in there. Uh, but, but if you look at the um, answers to the frequently asked questions, they include um, anything from debt retirement to future long-term contracts or prepayment of those contracts for various different items, um, some of which are directly related to uh, coronavirus and some of which are, are not, uh, but the grant program itself are, is being distributed uh, to assist uh, airports in continued operations. Okay, thank you very much for that clarification. So the motion is actually to approve the acceptance of, so this, this grant uh, has already been offered uh, at this point, Mr. my Chair. understanding. Uh, yes, Commissioner Nash. Yeah, I just wanted to add a comment that, you know, this is a coronavirus <laughs> grant, which is supporting an airport that has greatly been reduced in the ridership and revenues because of the coronavirus. And all of those dollars are usually distributed between operations, whatever they may be. So I don't see where there's some strings attached to this or need to be because we are very low in revenue compared to what we normally are, and these funds would be used for whatever reasons we need them for. So I don't see this as being suspicious or in any way. Um, 
you know, it would be good to have the expenditures reported or the financial statement that was written on what we plan on doing with those if there was one with the grant. But um, I see it as a, a great opportunity for us to plug some holes that we have because of the coronavirus and revenue. Okay. Well, thank you for your comments. Mr. Brown, one last comment. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Um, the total passenger activity at the airport was down versus 2019. That this was down from last year from anywhere from 97% down to uh, the best it was was 71% down. The parking revenue was down. The uh, fee paid per passenger, everything was down. So, and this grant will cover many things and we've been we've been arguing about who, how are we going to pay for the airport here's a way to pay for it yeah that's it thank you okay thank sure. you very much okay yeah. so we have a motion and we have a motion and support uh on the table for this uh, item and so we would need a, a roll call vote Mr. chair i have one more comment yes uh commissioner Lyon. So uh, in regards to uh, Commissioner Nash's response, so we all have heard the saying that something that's free never is. And uh, right here, it says county clerk to execute any necessary resolutions for the grant offer. Uh, you're approving to, you're, you're looking at a million dollar cash cow, just and you're, just the details that provided, I have no idea what resolutions that might be that she's going to uh, deem necessary to write in regards to for this million dollars. But I am very uncomfortable with this. And I'm uncomfortable with one person at the county writing resolutions to accept a grant. Mr. Chair, that was, yes. uh, that was my concern because I don't want us to go in to accepting this money and then later on, we're in trouble because we didn't spend it for what we wanted. And we need to know if some of the things we're going to spend it on. That was why I asked, would we do additional cleaning because of, of COVID? So. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for everyone's discussion. Good discussion. That's what uh, we have these for. Um, so I will ask again if there's any other uh Questions, comments, or concern, I'm going to ask for a vote on this item for consideration. Commissioner Laring. No. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pego. No. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Commissioner Javi Wright. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. I think we still are gonna need some additional information and Mr. Lukens, I think you, uh, uh, we can get to that at the next uh, meeting. Uh, next item for consideration is TR 21-03-11. Uh, uh, again, uh, to, or this is to authorize the board chair to execute M. Aeronautics ARFF grant 2021-0156 in the amount of $2,000 and authorize the county clerk to execute the required resolution. I would need a motion so and support. A motion so and support. Thank you. Any questions, comments, or concerns in regards to this item for consideration? I, I would just like to make a comment if I could, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Commissioner. I participated in this live burn on several occasions and it really is helpful not only for our airport staff, but to the uh, police and the fire that respond from, from other agencies. That's very helpful. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concern regarding this uh, item for consideration? Okay. Mr. Brown, that, I didn't hear oh, a sorry. second on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I have a second for that one? Um, oh, I'll second it. Thank you. Uh, I would, if there's no other questions, comments, or concern, um, I would um, entertain a, a vote. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pego. Yes. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Sear. 
Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Next item for consideration is uh, TR 21-03-12 uh, to authorize match to award uh, FRP 21-2403 for a micro transit turnkey dema uh, demand response service for the Muskegon area transit system to the highest rated vendor River North Transit LLC, a wholly owned subsidiary of Via Transportation Inc. Contingent um, on corporate counsel to review the contract items and to authorize the transit system manager to work with River North Transit LLC to finalize and continuously modify as necessary the service parameters of Matt's micro transit program for a three year period for a not to exceed price of $2,705,611. I need a motion and support for that uh, item for consideration. So moved. So, so I'll be right. We have a, Kathy, did you get that? We have a motion and support for that, so. I did, thank you. Okay, any questions, comments, or concern regarding this item for consideration? Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, the item is not budgeted. Uh, where is this $2 million coming from? Mr. Lukens, if you would like to address that. Uh, transit manager, Manager Jim Coons is on the line here, and oh, uh, I'm sorry, he can answer that question. Jim, thank you, commissioners. Um, the um, funding for this micro transit program is intended to be funded with our 50% federal uh, operating assistance that we receive on an annual basis, approximately 30% from the state of Michigan Department of Transportation, and then the remaining. Um, funds would come from the partner communities that participate in the program, uh, which we're expecting to be on the, <clears throat> on the initial service, uh, Muskegon, Muskegon Heights, Norton Shores, and Roosevelt Park. Uh, those commitments, um, pending board authorization of this item, those commitments will be uh, gathered. Finally, the, um, the fares that the customers pay will be the, the other piece. Um, I would say that in the, in the meantime, um, well, that's the answer. That's the intended source of, of funding for this. Mr. Coons? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chair, may I question? Mr. Yes, um, I've had a lot of calls on this item, uh, and um, a lot of people want to know how much the fares will be. I know you can't give an exact number, but um, an approximate uh, yeah. uh, fare. So in the route study that led us to this, the, the estimates we were using was a $4 fare one way for general public with a $2 reduced fare for seniors and persons with disabilities. Um, that is also a number that we put into the RFP for the vendors to consider, but the final fare calculations, um, we will need to look at that a little bit through the modeling process with the vendor to make sure that that fare is, um, both going to you know attract the right number of people as well as uh, provide the right amount of revenue um, on the big picture. But I think it will be four and two. Yeah, thanks. Here. That's what I said we had estimated before. So thank you. Yep. Yeah, and Mr. Coons, this, uh, there there is other municipalities around the country that have used this. It sounds like you know. So this is not uh, not uh, revolutionary uh, for Muskegon County. So. Um, I don't know if you want to share with some of the feedback uh, from, yeah, or what you've heard. Yes, sir. Well, this this is you know a fairly newer uh, type of public transportation that's coming to the fore. Um, this particular vendor um, has over 200 contracts where they are doing these types of services. Um, at least nine of which are with Federal Transit Administration funded partners. Um, so they are, um, they are gaining experience rapidly throughout the country and actually throughout the world with these types of deployments. And this is becoming um, more common to see in many areas. And I think th we're anticipating to answer uh, uh, Commissioner Hovey Wright, uh, the, the fares and actually the service uh, we're anticipating to improve for our, for our uh, residents of Muskegon County. Mr. Chair, can I have some Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. Um, You're okay. breaking up again. So, 
This is a new contract. We've not done this before. Is that correct? That is correct. This is a new type of service that was recommended through the route study process. Okay. Um, second related question to that, we're trying to move maps um, out from underneath the county. I don't know why we would need a three-year contract to be bound into this by the next year we're hoping not to be. And the third question is, so the intent is to have the 50% from the government, 30% from the state of Michigan, and the remainder from the partner communities. But what happens if there's a shortfall? Who's responsible for that then? So, so to try to answer the question about the term of the contract, in the RFP document, uh, we mentioned no fewer than five times that we do expect to have a termination for convenience clause in the final contract. We will be working out those terms with the vendors and corporate counsel to ensure that there's a termination for convenience clause. Um, likewise, we also included in there that we want to have the ability to transfer this contract to another entity should the governance of MATS be changed. So we'll have, uh, we'll have options to move the, um, the program or to end the program if need be. Uh, when the RFP was put together and issued back in, well, it was, it was developed throughout calendar year 2020, it was issued um, in October. At that point, the, the more recent discussions and urgency was not yet on the table. And so we, you know, we um, put it out as a three-year contract with an option for a two-year extension Again, that does not necessarily mean it will always be the county of Muskegon operating it, and we will make provisions in the in the uh, terms. Mr. Coons, didn't the, Mr. the, uh, the as the high, they became the highest rated vendor, and these were rated by other municipalities that would be part of this authority? Is that my understanding? I still had another question unanswered. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so I'll come back to yours, Mr. Brown. Um, uh, Commissioner Pago, your your last question. I'm trying to call what oh. the funding. So your intended funding or the intended funding, not not yours. Sorry, yeah. is 50 percent from the federal, 30 percent from the state, and the remainder from the municipalities that um, serve that um, the service is used from. But if that has a shortfall, then what happens? Where does where, who's responsible then? Yeah, so um, what we are um, <laughs> intending to do is to get service agreements with the partners so that we can identify that in the service agreements. Um, I have given them some draft, uh, the administrators of the four cities involved in this, I have given them some draft calculations of what I believe the local cost will be for this um, contract over three years. And we'll be seeking uh, some commitments from them pending board authorization here. The um, other thing I would say is this is a not to exceed price and the vendors, the vendor in this contract um, and, and all of the vendors for the most part um, indicated that they, we will scale the program, so to speak, if there are adjustments that need to be made. So if for example, a municipality determines that they're not going to participate we have options to either uh, adjust the geography of the program or perhaps change the fare structure in a given area to compensate for the, the local uh, community pulling out. But again, those are some of the things that we will need to work with over time as we implement the program. The intent is that, again, the, the partners that are participating in this program will both have to be partners in the core MATS program as well as cover their local share for the micro transit program. And what is your response so far from these municipalities? Are they in agreement or? Um, so what I've asked for most recently and, and have received um, a letters, a letter of commitment uh, from one indicating they're going to work on putting it into their budget, which would start their July one year. Uh, which is approximately when this service would go operational. Um, others are willing to bring that through some discussions at their councils this month, again, 
assuming that uh, the board authorizes this award, we will work to get those things in possible. Mr. Chair. Yes, please. Yes, uh, I would like to ask Mr. Coons, uh, well, first of all, to, a comment to, to the board. Uh, we have not made any decision about what direction to go with the transportation system. We are not necessarily going to go in the direction of um, uh, Mr. Laring wants. That's one of the options, but no decision has been made. So please do not make assumptions that we're going that direction. Um, the other thing is I would just like to um, uh, comment that in looking at the, uh, the RFP evaluation uh, spreadsheet, uh, I was impressed how much higher the score was for the River North Transit. Um, and at no additional cost to, you know, the, the cost is kind of right in the middle there. So um, it seems like a really good recommendation. Uh, and I know I tend to favor local uh, vendors, but um, in this case, I think uh, that the River North is, is a good choice. Now, my one question of Mr. Coons is, um, uh, will they have a, a local uh, presence so that problems can be worked out and and uh, residents have some place to go if they're if they're issues so it, it, that is this a question see. that we are um, we can dig into some more what what their model is and what they have done successfully in other communities is that they <coughs> will hire the the transportation drivers so to speak are, are going to be local um, they'll be independent contractors working on the VIA platform uh, with River North, but the support services for the program will come out of their Chicago and Detroit regional offices where they have experts. So if an issue comes up in area A, they have an expert that can deal with area A. If it's area B, they have an expert, as opposed to having somebody sitting in an office here that would have to refer those calls to an expert anyway. So in terms of having a local um, person who, I guess for lack of a better term, might sit and watch the four or five vehicles drive around town, they'll have that done remotely. They have offered the possibility of having something local in a part-time capacity. However, that reduces the amount of service that actually gets delivered. And so as, as some of what we've seen over the last year, there are a lot of things that can be done remotely. And uh, we'd like to see, uh, we'd like to have the opportunity to, to use their existing model that has been successful. And then if we determine that um, we need to have something uh, physically in town, we can work to modify that with them or see how it goes over the three years and make that a requirement of a future contract. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. good question. Yeah. Yes. yes, Commissioner Loring. Uh, so I've got some concerns with this also. Um, my problem with it is, is every one of these communities that you're in negotiations with are all cash strapped. You're talking approximately $10,000 a year from each one of these districts over a three year period. And I don't know where they're going to come up with the extra money. They don't know where they're going to come up with the extra money. And my problem is, is that this should have been secured before we're, we're going to enter into an agreement with only the idea from these municipalities that it sounds like a great idea. We'll talk about it. If they decide not to, we're stuck in a contract uh, for $2 million with potentially buy-in from the federal government and state, but no local buy-in. So I think I, I did a rough calculation. That's $90,000 plus or minus that might come down to uh, the county having to pick up that tab if these municipalities don't do it. I'm uncomfortable entering into a contract with this organization until you secured contracts from the municipalities <laughs> that we're going to serve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Is there any questions? Yes. Any other questions, comments, or concern yeah. regarding this uh, item for consideration? Coons? Yes. Mr. Coons, um, when we originally talked about this and talked about introducing the microtransit system, um, 
to make it more efficient, to make uh, make it better for the uh, the actual customers that use this, um, are we still uh, going to be running go buses? So, um, if I can just touch back to what was approved back in July of last year, uh, we implement we were authorized to implement the route study recommendation, which really had three pieces. The first was to change the route network for the fixed route buses which we did effective September 28th. The second was to change the GO bus program, uh, essentially eliminate the GO bus program as it previously existed as a countywide service. Um, what that GO bus program was changed to is essentially an Americans with Disabilities Act required paratransit service that operates just within three quarter miles of the route system. Those two changes were made effective September 28th, there is no more go bus or small buses running around town with the exception of that ADA component. Um, I, I say that with one exception and that will be the next agenda item, which is the reserve ride program, which is a temporary service that was authorized while we worked through this RFP process. So those are small buses running around the, uh, the urban core presently on a temporary program, but those will end. Okay, so so that will uh, that'll be reduced because I was under the understanding that we were, we were trying to increase the uh, the actual coverage uh, by going to this micro transit uh, system uh, and also possibly, uh, you know, reducing the cost is that uh, are we still going to have the uh, uh, the regular buses running their regular routes or were those will those routes be reduced at all uh, the, the routes the routes have already been reduced to okay. to coincide with this so there's not a further reduction planned at this time the okay. the um, the geographic coverage that we've requested in this proposal is the four cities uh, that I mentioned the urban cities um, if there were to be further expansion or, or other communities that wanted access to this, we would develop separate agreements and bring those to the board to, for example, include a city of Whitehall service or, or Dalton Township or some others. So uh, we're focusing on the, the starting point here. I expect this will be where we um, begin and, and perhaps end at this point unless other municipalities are interested in coming on and purchasing this type of service and we will bring that through the board. Okay, uh, generally then are we going to, uh, in your opinion, uh, with these changes we've made in the system last year and also the addition of the micro transit, the turnkey micro transit, are we gonna see an overall increase or an overall decrease in the transportation budget? The, we are working to effect an overall decrease. Um, we are, you know, subject to this being approved, that will allow us to make some additional um, uh, acts, take some additional actions. Um, some of the items on the agenda today are to remove some vehicles from the fleet that helps to reduce costs. Um, we have some vacant positions that we'll bring forward to you. Um, so we will continue to work toward reducing. Uh, but again, knowing this, having some certainty that this is the direction we're going helps us to make, take those next steps. So you will see a reduction as we move into preparation of fiscal 22 and, and then into 23 and beyond. Okay, thank you. Mr. Coons? Yes. Or Mr. Chair, um, yes. what kind of arrangements do we have from the cities of Muskegon, Muskegon Heights, Norton Shores, and Roosevelt Park? Do we um, have? Any well, the historic, eight. as you as you'll recall, the historic agreements are uh, need to be addressed because those were um, the underlying agreements from 1974 caused us some difficulty. Uh, at at present, the, those communities are paying their um, their uh, requested amounts toward the MATS program. Um, and then again, what we will do is, is work on a service agreement with them for this program. Um, at this point, I have you know a letter from one indicating they'll put it in their, uh, work it into their budget discussion uh, or into their budget recommendation. Um, and then a couple of others have said they're bringing it through various committees at their local councils. So 
so we don't have any, any well, agreement. It, it's a play, chicken and egg, no it's a chicken and egg believe, system. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, we have to, we have to know what we're what we're proposing. Um, and fortunately, this month anyway, there's a you know a 21 day or 19 day gap between committee and and full board. I'm hopeful I can get some more information during that time. Okay, um, Mr. Brown, yeah. could I? Make yes, a, yes, sir. Me, uh, Jim, if a community decides not to participate then they won't be covered by the transportation system. Is that correct? That is the first option we have. Um, whether that's the best option to deliver a functional system uh, is another question. But if that should happen, we can discuss options related to fares, options related to, you know, I, I don't know what the other options are. We'll have to cross that bridge. But the intent is that they will participate. And if they don't, they won't be receiving the service. So our cost will be lower. Yeah, that would reduce the, well, theoretically, yes, that will reduce the contract cost here because we will put fewer hours on the road. Right. Okay. Thank you. Here. Good discussion. Um, Hello, Mr. Any Chair. Other? Yes, Mr. Nash, um, Commissioner. Yeah. I, um, I've really been thinking about this a lot. And after being able to look through the, uh, the, the ratings that went through with the different ones and, and all the details. Um, matter of fact, Mr. Chair, you had made a, a, a good uh, request and comment regarding uh, possible partnership. And when I look at this, um, this company that we would support as being the winner, um, the only concern I think that even some of the raters had was the you know, the contracting. And I think Commissioner uh, Hubby Wright mentioned, you know, the quality of the services for our, our local people. Um, so in thinking about this, I'm thinking that it may be beneficial to uh, River North to have a local partnership with a vendor, um, which would help them be able to have more of a local face and a local presence in trying to integrate a new program within the people within this community, because we have to understand our ridership is really used to that. They're used to that type of uh, homegrown type of services that Matt's has been delivering for years with familiar faces. Um, I think this also could be very beneficial for uh, our vendors who really would love to be able to uh, be a competitor in some of this, but they're really at a total disadvantage coming into an RFP like this if they don't have an opportunity to have any experience. Uh, because one vendor, well, actually two vendors put it to me and said, well, if everything is based on experience, we'd never have an opportunity. We might as well not even bid. And I think this is a great way for us to not only help some of our local vendors become more experienced and involved, but also add to the quality of service of that and also meet some of the standards of federal uh, uh, procurement and uh, trying to make sure that we also get some of these money into some of our uh, uh, minority you know, business businesses, which I know for years, we've really had to struggle with that through maps. Um, but I look at that as a win-win for both companies. And I'm wondering, Mr. Coons, is there some way you can maybe communicate and facilitate that idea that they may be able to reach out to that local vendor who I believe um, could actually help supply them some exemplary services as a, as a partnership. Yeah, so I've, I have spoken with the vendor and, and we will have further conversations as we um, finalize contracting, but it, even not in the contracting, as we finalize the program design um, we'll have further conversations. They will be spending money on advertising. They'll be spending money on, on various things in the local community. And we can work with them to, to stress the importance of spending some of that locally. Um, so yes, we can, we can certainly make that point. Um, you know, we, we are prohibited from having a geographic component in our evaluation selection because of the federal funding component of this. Um, but that certainly does not preclude us from, from uh, 
you know, indicating what some of the services are available that can be purchased locally and, and working with River North to attempt to do that. Um, there's also expenditures, obviously, that Matt's makes locally. Um, and, and in this program, uh, you know, if there's any of those things, we can look for those opportunities as well. And, and that's what I, I didn't, I didn't mean this to be a demand on them or require. Yeah. What I meant is maybe encouraging because um, there's a couple of key areas that I know that this, you know, you mentioned marketing, which actually there's multiple county departments that use that vendor to do some of our main campaigns of marketing regarding COVID and, and, and even transportation and other things. Uh, but also I believe that, you know, it can also put more local faces to this new micro turnkey, you know, demand service that could help us actually solidify and grow stronger and faster. And so I'm just, like I say, I'm looking at it more as a win-win in so many different directions that maybe if, if you can be the, the key to encourage that, um, uh, just for them to at least reach out and maybe talk to, to the other vendors and see how they could possibly work together and then, you know, let them work it out. I will keep that conversation in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Could Thank you. you. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, one last comment. Okay. Yes, oh, Marcia. Yeah, um, just for those of you who are new to the board, um, this microtransit is a, a, a key, it's like part of a three-legged stool. We have the fixed routes, we have the, the uh, go bus for the, um, uh, disabled and then this is the piece that kind of fills in all the holes and mm -hmm. um, is a critical piece to the whole uh, public transit system so it's very important and I'm glad we're here uh, I wish the the turn the turnkey was faster but um, anyway it looks like a good uh, a good contract thank you Mr. Mr. Chair yes more question uh, thank you Marsha uh, <laughs> Commissioner for those comments. Uh, so I just wanna bring this back. The county is not in the business of providing extra goods and services. These are extras. This is not a mandate from anybody that the county provide any form of mass transit. This whole thing is extra. The contracts are not secure with the municipalities uh, to move this thing forward. This thing could wind up being a general fund expense to the county taxpayers. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, this is Mark Eisenbarth. I've been yes, Mark. communicating with our corporate council this week. In, in this motion, it talks about contingent on corporate council review and contract terms. In those terms, we will be including contingency for termination if funding is not secured. So okay, thank you. We hear you loud and clear, and that will be in the contract. That clarifies right. a lot. So thank and you. This contract would come back before the board for approval, correct? Right. That is correct. Full board. Okay. There All right. Is. If there's any other discussion, I, th um, I I think one of the things in the summary that just popped out to me was the changing needs of mats in our in our community. So uh, we're looking at different options, which I think is good. So thank you. Um, we had a motion and uh, support, and so I'd, I'd ask a, a, a call a vote for on this one, please. Sure, Pego. No. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Commissioner Javi Wright. Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Commissioner Hughes. Oh. I don't think she is. She's on. He's muted. Yeah. Oh, I'm get, I couldn't unmute myself. I'm on, on now. Yeah, I vote yes. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Lehring. No. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next item for consideration is uh, TR21-03-13 to authorize MATS to extend its operation of the temporary reserve a ride program until July 31st, 2021. So moved. We have a motion, uh, support. And I'll support it. Thank you. Scrolling. 
Any questions, comments, or concerns? Yes, um, I do. Um, this My question is for Mr. Coons. Uh, this seems like a long time uh, to wait, because I know when we were first talking about make, making this transition to um, uh, microtransit, that it, it wasn't going to take this long. So could you explain why it's going to take this long? Sure, Commissioner. Um, so the full board meeting is scheduled for March 30th. Um, if this is approved at full board, we'll, we will uh, move as quickly as we can to um, begin the, uh, the pre-operation pre phase. Uh, the pre-operation phase is the period of time where the vendor uh, for, you know, gets the vehicle secured, gets uh, drivers online, you know, finishes developing the scope of services with us in terms of you know, how the fares will work, how, you know, how many vehicles will be out when. Um, they are projecting, we had indicated, uh, and we expected 12 weeks. They're indicating they would like to try to get that done in 10 weeks after award, which if we can get this started April 15, that would put us um, to the uh, half of April, all of May, all of June. So we're looking at a July one, hopefully to have the micro transit launched and operational. I'm asking here to have reserve a ride continued through July 31, only because first of all, there, there's no necessary harm that we can't have both running simultaneously. But second of all, it gives us that month of July with our reserve a ride customers uh, as they're calling to, to perhaps book anything on reserve a ride. It allows us to help transition them over uh, to the micro transit service as well. So. Um, okay. We're just asking for a little extra time to be able to make the transitions necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, <coughs> questions? Yes. yes. So I noticed on the uh, on the summary, this is not budgeted. What is the cost for this extension to the dial ride? So I looked at the the cost that we've been attributing to the reserve ride for the fiscal year to date. So approximately five months. It was approximately fifty thousand dollars of expense. Um, if this is an additional four months, it, it could be forty thousand in expense. I would tell you, however, that um, operating this for an additional four months is not as if we were purchasing four months of service from outside. In other words, this driver, short of a decision to, you know, not have the driver. Uh, you're not going to just end the program March 31st as first as planned and then avoid some of these expenses. Um, so it's a, approximately $10,000 a month that we are tracking to this program. Um, extending it for four months would not necessarily result in a $40,000 savings. So I follow up on that. Uh, is this a service that's mandated by the state or federal government that the county of Muskegon provide? It is not. This is a service that was re, re uh, approved by the board of commissioners. Thank you. Mr. So, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. I was just wondering if we integrate the uh, micro transit system and we see that the transition actually goes smoother and faster, uh, Mr. Coons, you could also come back and ask for a, a reduction in this timeline. Is that correct? Yes, we could, or we could just organically direct customers to the new service, which would mean that this vehicle sits and is not deployed. Yeah, thank you. Is there any other uh, questions uh, for Mr. Coons? Sure. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, so this shows it's not budgeted, so where is that funding coming from? The, this is part of the MATS operation. Um, when the 2021 budget was prepared in the summer of 2020, there was not a reserve a ride program specifically called out. There were other programs, the, the Go Bus program, et cetera. So, Reserve a ride as a program is not budgeted, but we have uh, funding in the MATS budget for operations under which this can be, um, this, this will be a 
processed in an amendment as we do the budget amendment process. So it will be budgeted through the amendment process. So there's funding there it just has to be reallocated? Yes. Thank you. Okay. If uh, there's no other questions, uh, I would like uh, to uh, get a vote. Captain Skolnick, you're muted, Chairman. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? No. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? No. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Next item for consideration, TR21-03-14, uh, to authorize mass to remove bus number 0703 from the roster of active revenue vehicles and to permit match to dispose of the bus in future in a future vehicle equipment auction to be conducted using county surplus goods procedures or a scrap sale if the buyer is not found at auction so i need a motion and support for this uh, item for consideration so moved we have a motion and support did you get that, Kathy? Sorry. Hello? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions or comments or concerns regarding this item for consideration? Nope, seeing none, I would like a, a vote on the on this uh, uh, item. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Commissioner Heavy Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? Yes. Chairman Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Next item for consideration, uh, TR21-03-15 to authorize Mats to transfer ownership of the Mats minivans, uh, 1303 through 1309 and small buses 1904 and 1905 to Saginaw Transit Authority Regional Services STARS uh, using the MDOT vehicle transfer process. I would need a motion and support for this item for consideration. So moved. So moved. A motion and support. Uh, any questions, comments, or concerns? Yes. I, have a, I do have a question if I could. Yes, Commissioner Hughes. I, I'd like to, Jim, I'd like to know why you went with Saginaw Valley and I'd like to know if you talked to Harbor Transit since we are talking about becoming an authority with them. I wondered if you talked to them at all. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I have spoken to Harbor Transit. They did not uh, express interest in these particular vehicles. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, good question. Thank you. Any other uh, questions yeah. or comments? Mr. Chair? Um, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm just curious as to why we're doing this. Are these minivans that we won't need anymore after we get the micro micro transit? Yeah. Uh, I mean, some they don't have that many miles on them. They're looks like they're fairly new, especially the small buses. Um, Commissioner, the, the seven minivans that are on this list were purchased with federal funds administered by the state of Michigan in 2013, the intent would, was that we would use them in some of our expanded services, particularly <laughs> workforce development transportation. Um, we have used them in our GoBus program uh, periodically throughout uh, the last 10, uh, seven years. Um, they are no so and then this, for the two small buses obviously they have almost no miles on them they were received in 2019 through a similar situation federal funding administered by the state the state of michigan is first secured party on all the titles for these and they retain interest in how we use them so every year we have to report on some of these as to how many miles and passengers we we carried for the two small buses they must be used for service to the elderly and persons with disabilities beyond the requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And effective September 28th, we have no program in which we can use these. Um, and so we, we do not have an eligible program for them. 
Uh, however, Saginaw is operating services that could use these and they are in need of equipment. And this would be a transfer of the uh, essentially vehicles that the state provided to another entity that they work with. So we do not own any of these vehicles. They are we, they are titled to us, but MDOT is first secured party. So we would not be okay. able to do anything with regard to selling or transferring them without MDOT's approval. And they've requested that we transfer them and we do okay. not have a use for them. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? So um, one yes. question is, Mr. Coons, could these possibly be used in negotiations with the Michael Transit system? These vehicles, so again, the the um, the vehicles are not really what they're going to want to use in that program, and we did not include the the provision of vehicles in the RFP document. So right. it would be a change to everything that was solicited. Okay. That uh, any other questions? Okay. Mr. Loring, did you have your hand up or no? No, I didn't. Oh, no. Commissioner. Oh, okay. I would need a vote on this. Uh... Uh, yes. Commissioner, have you right? Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pego. Yes. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Next, next item on the agenda this evening is uh, unfinished business. Do we have any other unfinished business uh, that would like uh, to address this committee? Okay. Seeing none, any new What's business? Oh, I'm sorry. I have something. Uh, oh, did uh, I have 16? No, it was taken off. Mm -hmm. that was... Oh, okay. Yeah. It wasn't on the agenda. I wondered why I had it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, any new business? Mr. 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 Chair, I wanted to do uh, unfinished business. Yes, uh, sir. Because I, I thought about some of the commissioner's concerns with the uh, grant funding. And I was wondering, would it be inappropriate to have a motion to have all expenditures uh, approved uh, by this uh, board for the expenditures that go through with that grant funding? I, I which I uh, right. yeah. So any the, the 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 million dollars that was going to the airport, oh. there was some current concerns with the commissioners on how it was being spent. And I was just wondering if uh <laughs> by corporate council would it be inappropriate to have a motion to have those expenditures of those grant funds approved by the board prior to uh, those monies being spent. Joe um, Mir. Yes. Mark, are you there? Is that yes, uh, uh, Mike? Um, most of the grants require us to identify what has been spent in the state unit has to approve off and out of the feds. I think the state actually. So it, it would it wouldn't be uncommon to make sure that the board is aware of what the grants are being spent for. We can easily put a uh, report together showing what the grant is being used for. Um, any, after we make the expenditure, obviously it goes through uh, Ways and Means, um, but we can definitely inform this board. The Ways and Means still has to approve it for that expenditure. So we could at least put a report together how that money has been recommended to be spent. Okay, I, did, I, I didn't realize you were going to bring it before Ways and Means. That's fine. So, yeah. Okay. Does that, uh, Commissioner Nash, that answers your question? Yeah. Yeah. I, I was just thinking of some of the concerns of the commissioners that, you know, I think the feeling was that these monies were just going to be spent and we wouldn't know what happened with those. But if they're going to be coming right. before ways and means, then everything would have to be coming before us. Yeah, thank you. And I, you know, again, my comment earlier was any any grants that I've ever been involved with, that they're usually very specific to to what they're for. So, um, so, so we'll we'll run those by the Ways and Means Committee and and uh, have that time to review it. Um, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, yes, yes, Michael. 
Sorry, um, I just want to, and um, I think some of this information probably will be shared at the full board, but I just want to uh, just kind of give you a sense uh, quickly, if I can, about uh, the scope of that spending. So um, on this particular grant program, uh, you permitted to uh, spend that money on uh, operations, personnel, cleaning, sanitization, janitorial services, combating the spread of pathogens at the airport and debt service payments. So for example, the um, there's a question, uh, FAQ and answer about spending and um, you know, can it be used to be reimbursed for debt service payments? The answer is yes. Can you use it for operational expenses? Um, the answer is yes. Um, so that includes operate, maintain, and manage an airport. They include expenses such as payroll, utilities, service contracts, and items generally having a use or limited useful life, including personal protective equipment um, and cleaning supplies. Uh, monthly payments on debt service. Um, uh, can you use them for new airport development? Yes, but they're limited to the types of development. So it's very broad. Um, and I think um, if I'm understanding the grant program collect correctly, there was a set amount of dollars um, set aside for uh, types of airports. And then those funds were allocated to those airports based on a variety of factors so that all airports in the country got a share of those uh, grant proceeds. So it wasn't necessarily, there, even though there, there might have been an application process, uh, those funds were allocated generally across all different types of airports uh, based on a formula, um, as far as I can see. Thank you for that clarification. Well, Chair, this is Mark yes. again. Uh, yes, along Mark. with that, uh, Mike Lemire sent us a couple links. Those links have been forwarded to you already. So uh, those are at your fingertips. Thank the you. other topic I want to talk about under unfinished business is our tenant at the airport. Our intention was to have a settlement in front of you today um, that was removed because we're not quite there yet um, as when this went out, which it was Monday. Um, since then, we've had more communications and I believe we're very close to an agreement. And if we get that agreement done next week uh, with this board's approval, I assume to spring it under my report so we can get that behind us. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, are we on unfinished business or new business? I think we went back to unfinished. And if there's no unfinished business, we'll, we'll entertain the new business. So I do have an item of new business. Thank you. All right. So uh, to, for debate purposes, I'm going to make a motion. Uh, we received, so I will make a motion that we reroute the bus to go by the veterans facility out by the airport and mm -hmm. to the airport. I would like second. a second. Support. Mm. Would you restate that? Yes, I am making a motion to reroute the bus to go out by the veterans facility and out to the airport. And we have a motion and support for that motion under new support. business. Thank you. Uh, any uh, I, any I questions? Have a, I have a comment, if, if it's okay. Um, yes. I'd yes, like sir. to ask, I have a couple things. One is, um, we ran a bus out there for a long time. And I'd like first to have Mr. Coons comment on the ridership of that. Then we would run a bus out there. All somebody has to do is call and we will gladly take them to the airport. But Mr. Coons, how many people were taking that bus to the, the veteran service center out there? Yes, commissioners, we, um, <clears throat> we were serving the airport uh, via a spur from the Harvey bus um, as early as 2012 when the, when the veteran center went out to that remote location or a veterans clinic, I'm sorry, when they went out there, uh, we eventually ended up making it a regular every hour stop to that route. And then in the route study process, it was determined that that was not um, a feasible area to cover with route service. <coughs> Some of the data that I had looked at 
in response to this. We, we did some surveys in October of 2018. We did some on and off surveys that reflected, uh, as I recall, it was a half a half of boarding per day average. It was one one person boarding, one person deboarding over the two, uh, sorry, three days that we surveyed it. Uh, when the consultant did their sampling, they were somewhere between three and five passengers per day that were using it. Part of the recommendation to do the reserve ride and the microtransit is that that facility will be accessible by those programs. Right. And, and uh, the, not only would it be accessible, it would be accessible directly from their origin to that location. So right. I think we can provide better service via the microtransit versus redirecting a route that currently is not in that area. Right. Mr. Yeah. Chair, could I have a comment well, to you, please? Uh, yes, Commissioner Hughes. I, I just wanted to mention that uh, the Veterans Services in Muskegon County has had a van, minivan donated to them, and they do offer services to get people out to that clinic if they need to themselves. So it would kind of be double dip in there too. Uh, yeah, and I think they, you know, my, um, excuse me, just a comment. I think uh, we had gotten some emails from the VA um, and they had to make some um, modifications because of that bus route. So uh, that is concerning to me that they had to uh, uh, to do that. So, so yes, you know, Commissioner Hughes, I, I, I'm not aware of that, but I do know there was some emails uh, back and forth um, and made, made a comment that, if, well, when you eliminate something, you got to come up with some alternatives. So, yeah. um, you know, so anyways, um, but we do have a motion and support on on the table at this point, and I want to entertain that motion, if I may. I'm muted here. I have a comment. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, so we have received from the Veterans Administration at the state level a request to increase the size of that facility. Uh, they want to double the square footage of that office. Uh, they expect to see 5,000 appointments a year out there if they double their size. Currently, they are giving COVID vaccinations out there. And I did talk to Mike Blau with that free van that was mentioned that they can provide adequate service out there uh, for the amount of vaccinations that the Veterans Administration wants to do out there. They can provide some rides, but they can't um, come close to this. And secondly, if we're going to try to increase um, the revenues and the ridership out at the airport, um, there are very few major airports that do not have bus service to them. And we have an airport that we're trying to promote ridership to. We need to make it easy for residents to get in and out of that airport. Currently, just because there's no rides coming into that airport, the ridership's going to be down. But we've recently hired a new management firm that would like to see a bus out there and we also uh, anticipate more riders coming in uh, that's not that far off of this route we're just we're we're not going to reroute it by a significant distance the other thing is we have a major uh, industrial park out in that area and no bus going out there and every one of I think we've all heard from the Chamber of Commerce that they are having a significant problem getting low or entry level positions into these industrial facilities. And that would take the bus to a general, uh, very close proximity to the industrial park. Um, and in this current environment, we need to be able to support the community to get to work, to get to the airport. And we have a significant number of veterans. They want to increase the size of their facility, but to, they want a bus stop. Oh, thank you, Commissioner Loring. I think we also got a uh, email from the VA Battle Creek, which kind of uh, coincides with with those comments that they're increasing. So, uh, I think I think this would be a. So, anyways, we have a motion and support. And if there's any other questions or comments, uh, I'll entertain those. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, com uh, yeah. Commissioner. Um, you know, we we just went through a extensive route study and uh, made changes based on the usage. Uh, I mm -hmm. know there are areas in my district on Sherman mm -hmm. where there are a lot more riders than what we're talking about to the airport. And, and you know, once we open that door, 
to changing the fixed route system based on you know what one commissioner wants or another one wants uh it, it, we're that's going to be a nightmare uh we're opening a Pandora's <laughs> box with this and it sounds like um from what i can see and for what was explained um that population can be better served by the uh the uh, disability the bus for uh what do we call it? The disability bus, and the uh, and the um, fit. Excuse me, the uh, micro transit, um, and uh, you know, that's a that's that's curb to curb. So right, Mister Mister Chair, Mister Yes, Commissioner Sear, please. Mister Coons, are you still on? Yes, sir. Uh, you did say that uh, that micro transit is going to service that area, correct? That 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 yeah. veterans facility, Shore. also the airport. Is that correct? Presuming yes. the city of Northern Shores remains committed to it, yes, and and the reserve ride is currently serving it as well. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Brown. Could I make yes. one, one yes, comment? Yes, sir. Um, there was a comment made about the uh, VA wanting to double the size of that facility, and that may be, but. The Veterans Administration Clinic originally was in our own building where um, the Veterans uh, Service Center is right now. They, they, had, they had doctors there and the whole thing. They decided to move out to the airport. From the time they said they were going to do that to the time they actually did it, it took about five years. So I don't know when this expansion is going to be out there, but when that time comes, uh, hopefully the authority or whoever's running the bus system can make that decision. One last thing, I'd like to just reiterate what, what um, Commissioner Hovey Wright said. We have no, really, it's not our job to tell the bus where to go. We, we paid $150,000 or whatever the number was to do that route study. Um, Mr. Coons just said they weren't even taking maybe one, one passenger there a day. The Veterans Service Center got a brand new van for my auto imports donated to help with this transportation. It just takes a phone call. So anyway, that's my comment. Oh, thank you. Any other comments at this point? Okay. Yeah, Mr. Yes. Chair, I would, yes. I would say too that I had already uh, spoke with Mike about this the other day, not regarding this situation, but mm -hmm. he did say that they had a new van donated. And he also mentioned that they are able to help the veterans by even getting the VA shuttle to help with transportation. So um, with the combination of the two different services that we're proposing here with the reserve ride and then the micro transit, and then the assistance with the um, transportation with the VA, um, I think we pretty much have it maybe over covered at this time. And I think we should just let see how things work out with these services as they uh, get implemented and developed. And I think you'll find that this, this micro transit may end up being more popular than people will realize. Yeah, and uh, it will be a, a service that I think this community is probably going to look at us as being on the forefront of, of coming up with more innovative ideas on how to do this. And it will service the people much more adequately than maybe even a bus route. Okay. Well, I do not want to uh, be accused of not uh, making a parliamentary procedure. So we do have a motion and support uh, for Commissioner Loring's uh, motion. Go ahead, uh, do you have another comment? Yes, I do. Thank you. So we have received notice from the Veterans Administration out of Battle Creek that they will not expand that facility without a bus stop. So and that yeah. I was looking for that note and I didn't find it. So thank you for for uh, making that comment. Could I, could I ask if that's an official request or did you just see, receive it yourself or did it actually go to the county? I forwarded, I actually was talking to the architect about uh, another item and put me in touch with this one gentleman and he called, uh, I don't know how he got a hold of us, but uh, I think there was an email floating around. So. so it wasn't an official request, it was just a conversation 
or was it? No, it was official. It was an official request. It was an email that was sent to us. So, okay. Mr. I didn't Brown, see a copy could you of send that to me? Could you send that to me again? I, I don't remember yes. seeing that. Okay. We're talking about it, but I don't remember seeing an official letter. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It was an email. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, any other comments, uh, questions, or concerns? If not, we have a we do have a motion and support on uh, the table at this point. Mr. Brown, I, yes, I have one more comment. If yes, in sir. fact what what was just said is true, um, mm -hmm. I would reconsider my vote on this. Right now, I'm going to vote no. But if that comes back and that's a requirement to get that expanded, then I guess we have no choice. But right now, I don't know what what's going on with this. It's, it seems like it'd be more than a, a an email. It seems like it'd be a yeah, I, request. And all of us I, didn't receive it. Okay. <laughs> Can you hold the vote until full board? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think we should. Okay. Mark, Sounds you, like can't, we're, you still have to table. I, I will for that. Table or it has to be withdrawn or you have to vote. For table. Motion to table. Four. Okay. Support. And identify when you want it to be brought back, which would be the 20, which would be the full yeah, board. The 30th. 30th. Once we get an official request. There we go. That works. Okay. Mark, I'm sorry. I'll find that and send that over to you. So I, I just need to read uh, under procedures. This is a motion to table until the next full board, not necessarily per any official request. This motion to table was just a table until the next. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, that's by uh, Commissioner Hovey Wright. And I know didn't hear yes. who supported it. Commissioner Wilkins. Thank you. So we have a motion to support to table it to the next full board meeting. Uh, I will ask for a, a, a vote on that, please. This is to table. Commissioner Hubby oh, Wright. To table, yes. correct. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pago. Yes. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Okay, thank you. Is there any other new business uh, at this time? Okay, seeing none, public comment. Do we have any public comments? Um, Mr. Chair, there are no hands raised. Thank you, Commissioner Hughes, appreciate that. Any final board comments? Uh, Mr. Right. Yes. Final comment. So, as much as I appreciate Commissioner Hughes' enthusiasm, I appreciate the administration to respond to public comment. Uh, they should be the ones that are determining whether or not there is public comment. Um, they can see more than we can and uh, would appreciate their response to public comment. That's fine. I just, as vice chair, I was just trying to help when. And I just moved on to transit. So I'm trying to help not hurt. Okay, thank you. I, and uh, if no other final board comment, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Support. And support, thank you very much.